Over the next few days and possibly weeks, all eyes are going to be on Congress as they work towards a resolution to increase our country's borrowing limit. Congress has raised our debt limit or debt ceiling 78 times since 1960, either through a permanent increase or a temporary extension or suspension, which they've done seven times since 2013, or by revising the definition of the debt limit. Congress last raised our debt limit to $31.4 trillion in de December of 2021, and according to the Treasury Department, we actually approached this threshold earlier this year in January, and since then have been using a series of extraordinary accounting measures to avoid defaulting on our obligations. Secretary Yellen has indicated that the so-called X date, or the date when our country will no longer be able to fund its bills, could come as soon as June the 1st, although the exact timing of this date is not precisely known. What if Congress is not able to reach an agreement in time to raise our debt ceiling? Some have speculated our government could avoid a technical default by, by choosing to prioritize payments, servicing U.S. government debt instruments first before satisfying other payments. Uh, a report that was issued in 2012 by the Tre Treasury Department suggested they did consider temporarily delaying certain payments during the impasse that occurred in the summer of 2011. But an actual U.S. government default would no doubt come with a series of negative economic consequences and risks. A default would likely exacerbate any looming economic slowdown, leading to more job losses and likely higher borrowing costs for the U.S. government, which would only make our fiscal challenges even more problematic. We certainly hope we do not get to this point, um, but if a breach of our debt limit did occur, one would think that the stress in the financial markets would pressure lawmakers to come to the table and get things resolved rather quickly. Looking at 2011, Congress would, was not able to reach an, an agreement to raise our debt limit until a couple of days before the X date at the time. And you can see here stocks did decline by a few percentage points leading up to that agreement. And after a temporary reprieve, stocks declined by uh, about 10% more um, after Standard & Poor's downgraded U.S. government debt from AAA to AA plus for the first time in history. We believe this go around, Congress will again come to an agreement around the debt ceiling, although uncertainty on the timing um, and potential consequences of inaction uh, could, could lead to periods of increased volatility here in the near term. And given how these tense political standoffs can sometimes cause short-term indigestion in financial markets, we do think it's important to reiterate our emphasis on patient, long-term investing. As Warren Buffett says, the stock market is a vehicle for transferring money from the inpatient to the patient. And we would also add that no matter how dire the near-term risk may seem or uh, market forecasts may be, um, investors are generally rewarded for adhering to their longer-term plans, their long-term principles, and in our case, maintaining fundamental investment disciplines of diversification and of owning quality companies that are well positioned to grow their earnings and to grow their dividends over time. So to summarize, nobody knows how the current round of negotiations regarding the debt ceiling will be resolved, and this uncertainty could pressure asset prices. However, we do think Congress will eventually hammer out a deal and the market should be able to grind through and ultimately reward patient investors in due time.